But what I'm also feeling here for the King of Wands and the Nine of Wands is you all, it's almost as if you've taken that energy that the other, that this other person, if that resonates with you, if that this other person put out there, the way that they carried themselves, the self-confidence, the belief, you're taking that and you're using that to your advantage to move you away from this cycle. Some of it might be out of spite, but like you're at an advantage. Just don't take it too far, okay? Just keep in mind that you're trying, you're trying to get away from this Three of Swords energy, period. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading, your collective tarot reading. Yes, please keep in mind this is a general reading, so take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Uh, as always, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. A big welcome to all the new people that have joined the collective, that have joined the unicorn herd, yeah? Thank you guys for being here. Um, make sure that you pay attention to the title. This is a, not a dated reading, so like this is whenever it resonates for you, yeah? And it's also, it's general. Um, okay, I really don't have anything to say other than that. Other than the fact that I'm pretty loopy this morning. Last night was a pretty interesting night. Um, uh, a good deal of the area that I'm in right now. All A bunch of different towns lost power last night. Because there was a... Um, not a transformer, but like one of the... One of the boxes or one of like the major... Oh, a substation. One of the substations that services a big swath of the area around here uh, went out last night. So, um, luck, obviously I have power again, yay. But uh, like I was, we, I, I didn't get to bed till pretty late cause I ended up going out and um, hanging out with some friends trying to find something like to eat. And we all just kind of hung out in the square and had a good time. And by the time I got home, the power was back for me, but, um, a lot of like the actual the uh the pueblo the town of rincon like the big the big town area was still without power um and so by the time i got home also i was so like it, it kind of took me a bit to wind down to fall asleep so i'm a bit loopy this morning but it's okay we're all good we're gonna get into this um so we're going to get started with, we're going to be using the uh, uh, True Heart Intuitive Tarot again today. And um, yeah, and then I'm going to use the Los Carabello deck as our clarifier. And of course, as always, we will cross the Oracle Guidance Bridge when we get there. Yeah. All right, y'all, let's just get into it and see what we've got for the collective today. Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, circumstances, places, and places in of which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. I have a grammar question. Uh, I'm going to give this five shuffles, but like to all my, to all my grammar people out there, <clears throat> is it, is it in the like situation, circumstances, blah, 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 of which or in which we need it the most? I've been saying in which we need it the most, but then part of me is like, no, Eric, I think it's of which. I don't know. You guys tell me down in the, in the comments below. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is one. Mm. Do I love me some good grammar? <laughs> This is two. <laughs> oh boy. Loopy, man. I am loopy today. This is three. And like, you have to just kind of like roll with the punches with things like that. There are things that happen that are just out of your control. This is four. 
and you just gotta roll with it. Um, so I'm doing my best. This is five. Jinx, you better leave that. You better leave that alone, Jinx. That better not hit the floor, Jinx. She's up on my dresser playing with one of my crystals. Hey, excuse me, cat. I'm talking to you. This is five. Don't act like you can't hear me, Jinx. Yeah. Better stop it. Mm -hmm. And then she gives me that dead ass look like, what? I didn't do anything. <laughs> Jinxy. Uh, do you like my broken cup? I'm so upset. Jeez, I'm sorry, guys. So many tangents. But like this, this was the original Morton Coffee cup, right? Someone that used to be a follower um, suggested that I get this cup. And I've used it ever since. I did have to buy another one because all the color faded. But look, the handle broke. Whatever. Well, <laughs> let's see what we've got for the collective today. Ooh. Well, shit. We've got something popping off right off the bat, y'all. Right out the gate. All right. This is a lot of cards, but we're going to take them. At the bottom of the deck, you have the Wheel of Fortune. Great change, y'all. Great change. Okay, so what I'm feeling for this is that this is a this is an ongoing level of change. All right, so this is most likely connected to everything we've been talking about since last week. And here's the thing, you guys. If you're pretty new to my channel, um, what you may not recognize or what you may not realize at this point is that morning coffee, even all, to be honest with you, all of my readings, whether it's the morning coffee readings or the, like, the monthly readings that I do or whatnot, Ask Sagittarius. We've been talking about this similar situation for them since August of 2019. But when it comes to my readings, they often have a continuation in, involved with it. So like the storyline continues. We'll be talking about a specific situation or a specific circumstance or energetic vibration for an extended period of time, however long it takes to really get all the messages out there. And I already feel like with this Wheel of Fortune, that's what we're talking about here. We've been, we're talking about this change uh, this cycle closure, actually, what I just heard, this, this, this closure of some sort of cycle or some sort of karmic energy or just like a karmic hamster wheel type energy or just great change, bringing massive change into your life. Um, and it's the similar, it feels similar to what we were talking about last week. Okay. Now you have the wheel of fortune at the bottom of the deck underneath the, underneath the wheel of fortune is the nine of cups. Okay. Um, to the six of pentacles, to the two of cups, so uh, it does feel like here we could be talking about um, the recreation of a romantic cycle or a romantic energy, okay? But what I feel like here is, um, I I'm just going to go with this because that's what I feel like this is. This feels like romance right now, like romantic relationships, love and all that stuff. But it feels like you're standing alone and, it well, not alone. You're standing on your own. You're standing in a very independent energy. I am getting that from the Nine of Cups. I will say that the Nine of Cups is feeling a lot like the Nine of Pentacles right now. But this is in terms of emotional fulfillment, standing on your own and, fu and, and fulfilling yourself, finding your own sense of emotional fulfillment, okay? And it feels like with the Wheel of Fortune here and the Six of Pentacles, um, obviously this is not for everybody because th this really feels like we're talking to people that are single right now. Um, and if you're not single, um, I don't exactly know how this would be working out for you. I'm trying to feel into that and it feels very, very complicated and like my mind just can't put it into words right now because there's so much wrapped up. That's in terms of if you're not single, but if you are single, well, and if you're not single, just take it as it resonates and fit it into your life as it fits for you. I'm just having trouble really interpreting, interpreting, right, interpreting your energy right now. But for those of you that are single, it feels like you're standing on your own you're standing in your power. You want to be alone is actually what I just heard because you are wanting to preserve some sense of happiness and reciprocity for yourself. And it feels very specifically that, you, uh, that you're that you finally, finally comfortable with standing on your own until you find that right ideal partner or that right partnership, that right match that gives you satisfaction that you're looking for, but then also a sense of um, uh, reciprocity. I also did just hear deep wish fulfillment. Now, let's look at what else we have here. Okay, uh, the, the first set of cards that fell out here, it's just two cards. It's the Tower and the Ace of Wands. So this definitely feels like the energy of um, you wanting to be alone, you feeling inspired, okay, wanting to uh, 
I just heard wanting to complete this cycle. I feel like that's what the Ace of Wands is representing here for you. It's a desire to complete whatever toxic cycle you've been a part of. And what is that cycle? Oof. Okay. Um, well, you have the Five of Swords, the Three of Swords, the Nine of Wands, and the King of Wands. Uh, and then also with that, you do have the Two of Pentacles. The Two of Pentacles fell out on its own. It did fall face down. Um, to be honest with you guys, I don't feel like this King of Wands is another person. <clears throat> I feel like this King of Wands is you, especially if, if this is resonating for you. Honestly, this is a general reading, but you guys, this really does feel like a reading mainly for singles. But I encourage you to watch, you know, take what resonates. You might find something in this reading for you if you're not single. Uh, but there's a strong sense of independence here for you, okay? You have the King of Wands and the Knight of Wands. I'm sorry, the Nine. The King of Wands and the Nine of Wands. This is what's making me feel like this is your energy and not someone else external to you. Because there is a level of determination. Uh, and I'm hearing a sense of freedom. And maybe it's a sense of freedom that you're seeking. Or for some of you, it's a sense of freedom that you have recently come upon, stumbled upon. Okay, And it looks like, or at least it feels like, you are determined to maintain that. You're determined to push through. To move away from the Five of Swords and the Three of Swords. Now, for others of you... There is an other person that is being represented by this King of Wands energy. And what I'm feeling like here is if this is you or if this part resonates for you, this was a past situation. It may be very recent, okay? It may be y'all just broke up. I wanted to say two hours ago. <laughs> Yikes, okay. Um, maybe two months ago, something like that. But y'all just broke up recently and you are determined to get away from this situation because there was an extended period of you trying to keep the balance, keep the peace, and trying to appease this person. And that's what turned this into a Five of Swords type of situation, a lose-lose energy, okay? Self, um, uh, 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 well, a strong sense of defeat, uh, but um, self-sabotage, there we go is the word I was looking for here. But your determination to move forward is coming from your determination, your determination to tear this tower down, to finally end this cycle, to finally bring this structure down. And in you doing that, you have been experiencing more emotional satisfaction than maybe you have ever felt, or maybe you felt it in a very, very long time, especially since it feels like you were connected to this person for a long time, and you were just trying to juggle and keep the peace and keep everything afloat. And it just became too much. Now we don't have the 10 of wands, but that it doesn't matter. It ultimately, it, it feels like it just became too much. But now that you seem to have put some sort of a cycle to an end, number one, your inspiration to end that cycle came from a desire to be happy. Okay, to just feel content, to be able to wake up in the morning or wake up in your day or just, um, you know, change your focus at any point in your day and just be like, damn, life is good, you know? And so that was your inspiration, okay, to bring this tower down because you were finally, you were tired. You were tired of the heartbreak, three of swords, okay? You were tired of the fighting, the constant fighting, the constant arguing, the constant battles, and you were tired of juggling. And now you've set yourself free. And you're much happier now than you have been before. And in some cases I've heard than you ever have been. And I'm feeling you have direct control over the amount of reciprocity that you do or do not experience in your life. And if you're not experiencing the proper amount of reciprocity for yourself, you, you are out of there. And you're out of there because you're trying to preserve your happiness, your peace, your sense of serenity is what I just heard, okay? Now, the King of Wands and the Nine of Wands is kind of representing an old, outdated situation, an old relationship, an old connection. Doesn't matter about the gender here, all right? Don't, don't worry about gender. Again, we are gender neutral on this channel. If you're new here, then just take it as it resonates and don't worry about gender. Just fit, fit things in your life as they fit. 
But what I'm also feeling here for the King of Wands and the Nine of Wands is you all, it's almost as if you've taken that energy that the other, that this other person, if that resonates with you, if that this other person put out there, the way that they carried themselves, the self-confidence, the belief, the self-belief that, you know, just like not try to hear anything other than what their own ego or their own mind has to say, you're taking that and you're using that to your advantage to move you away from this cycle, whatever this cycle is for you, okay? That's that's for some of you. And it does feel, some of it might be out of spite, but like at this point, to be honest, it's, it's you're, you're at an advantage. Just don't take it too far, okay? Just keep in mind that you're trying, you're trying to get away from this Three of Swords energy, period, okay? Um, so, yeah. Clarification, they're saying. Okay, let's do that. Um, I definitely want to talk about this. Yes, Orion, how may I help you? Sorry, guys. I wanted, I definitely want to talk about the Ace of Wands and the Tower here. We, we are going to talk about that. But first, actually, let's talk about what we really need to be talking about is the Three of Swords and the Five of Swords here. We may even want to um, clarify the King of Wands. You're going to have to wait, Orion, because now the doors are closed, and I'm not getting up to open them yet. Loud mouth. Five shuffles. One. Kitty cat. This is two. You have to wait. This is two. <sighs> this is three. Four. And five. All right. So let's talk about the Three of Swords and the Five of Swords. Yes? What is the Three of uh, What is the Three of Swords and the Five of Swords for the collective, please, Spirit? Three of Swords, Five of Swords. What is the Three of Swords? Okay. Okay. You have the King of Cups at the bottom of the deck. So yeah, you guys, this definitely is still connected to what we've been talking about since last week, okay? This is a continuation of that masculine energy that came through yesterday, okay? Um, so what happened here with this Three of Swords and this Five of Swords energy? Uh, first card out is Temperance. Do you hear him? Orion. First card out is temperance, to clarify this, okay? So there's a, what this is saying is there, you started to understand, or there's a, there, there's a deep sense of balance that started to come into play. I feel like what helped you shift out of this, what I heard is time frame, time period. Uh, and then I, I just heard your masculine energy started to come into play and you start, oh my God. And you started to recognize or realize that there was a need for greater balance. And it feels like it got to a point, and this is especially for those of you that were fight, that were in some sort of romantic relationship where you were fighting for the survival. Oh my God. You were fighting for the survival of the relationship. Hold on. Jesus. Sorry about that. He was going to stand there at the door and, and wail at the top of his lungs until I let him out. So I threw his ass out. Anyway, um, you were fighting for the survival of the relationship in this, and that's what, and, and that's what caused this to become, to go oh, not only from the three of swords, just heartbreaking, you know, destructive, terrible backstabbing, well, kind of backstabbing, that, that type of, whatever, just three of swords energy. It went just from, uh, <laughs> as if it could ever be this, just the plain old three of swords, it went from that to the five of swords. Because it seems, it feels like you were doing everything that you possibly could to keep this situation going. Because this guy didn't want to, this person, whether it's a man or a woman, it didn't matter. This King of Wands energy was, I guess, 
was in their own lane, was like doing their thing, was not really too worried about it, but you were struggling, you were fighting to keep this afloat. But what happened, what had happened was, there was a level of understanding that greater balance needed to come into the, to the situation. You have temperance with the sun, the emperor, and the eight of swords. Now, for some of you, what happened also was that you realized that this individual that you were with was extremely controlling. The sun, the emperor, and the eight of swords. You, you started, you, you, you saw the light, the sun. And you recognize that this person was just holding you down, was just keeping you in some sort of mental prison or keeping you in some sort of confinement energetically or physically. I hope not. But like, you know what I mean? The, the, the emperor is naturally controlling. But when he's positively aspected, he's controlling in a protective way. He does it to ensure the safety of the domain of the of the empire of the of the family whatnot whatever but when the emperor is negatively aspected he's controlling for his own gain for his own whim for his own fancy that kind of thing and that's kind of what it feels like this is you realized the control that was being exerted over you or the confinement that you were within in this relationship and again it just feels like you went from being someone to try that's trying to appease to someone that's stepping into this exact same energy, but using it to your advantage. At the bottom of the deck, you have the King of Cups, to the Three of Pentacles, to the Chariot, okay? So this is you being emotionally available, emotionally aware, and doing what it is that is not easy, but you know you gotta do. And this is all in terms of working on yourself. It feels like you got to a point where you would rather be on your own, standing on your own, independent, in your feel-good energy. And you would rather work on yourself. Put this work that you've been working towards in terms of the relationship, you would rather put that towards yourself than fight for, the, for this relationship any longer. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's exactly, you guys, what is causing the Wheel of Fortune to turn in your favor. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the choice that you made that's allowing you to, to, to switch it up, to change the game on this person. And it's almost as if you're leaving this King of Wands energy in the dust, completely confused. Like what the hell is going on here? I literally heard she can't walk away from me like that. And don't don't get it twisted. We're not talking gender here. However, this is masculine energy, okay? But uh, take it as it resonates. She can't walk away from me like that. He can't walk away from me like that. It doesn't matter. All right. The fact of the matter is that you took your power back. And yes, you absolutely can walk away like that. The emperor with the sun. Because now you're fully aware of the mental prison or the confinement that you've been under. And you are at this point now where you realize that greater balance needs to be brought into the situation. Okay. And that's what's changed in the game for you. So with that said, now let's talk about the Ace of Wands and the Tower. Yeah. Okay. So what's the Ace of Wands and the Tower for the collective? Please, Spirit. Ace of Wands and the Tower. One card. One card only. Ooh. Well, obviously there's going to be two technically because we're looking at the bottom of the deck. At the bottom of the deck is the Ace of Pentacles. Ooh! To the King of Swords. To the Ten of Pentacles. There's the Ten of Wands. Okay, to the Hierophant, to the Queen of Cups, to the Seven of Wands. To, to the Queen of Swords, the Hanged Man, Page of Pentacles, Queen of Wands, Judgment, Page of Cups, Seven of Swords, but then to the Ten of Swords. Okay, um, <clears throat> what's really most important, again, uh, like if you're new to me, you'll find out real quick. I tend to get sucked down the rabbit hole and start reading like all the cards from the bottom of the deck, which often works. It's just like, sometimes my guides are like, Eric, you're going too far down there. It's like, okay, all right, fine. <laughs> but I'm curious, I wanna know. Okay, so anyway, we're clarifying the Ace of Wands and the Tower. 
The one and only card that has come out here to clarify the Ace of Wands and the Tower is the Ace of Cups, okay? So what gave you this inspiration to bring this tower down or to bring this situation to an end, to, to end this cycle or to destroy this structure for yourself was self-love, Ace of Cups, which then provided you with the inspiration to go after a new opportunity. Three aces, okay? This is excellent. This is awesome, okay? Moving forward now, with this Ace of Pentacles, you've got the King of Swords. Seeing the situation clearly, exactly for what it is. And that is what has influenced you. There was, there was this moment, it, there was like, I'm surprised we don't have the Ace of Swords here. However, the King of Swords is actually, um, is actually a, a, a better representation of this energy. Because yeah, there could have been a moment where like it hit you like a bolt of lightning or whatnot. You had a certain, a, a sudden aha moment, the light bulb went off. But it's not just about the light bulb going off and you getting it all of a sudden. It's about getting it, but also seeing clearly what it is and what you need to do to stop it. And effectively bring the, the situation to an end, 10 of pentacles, and effectively ending the burdens, 10 of wands, of this commitment, this partnership, this institutionalized energy, this status quo type of situation. And that's kind of what this King of Wands energy would thrive on. He, it seems this King of Wands energy had some sort of public opinion behind them or some sort of societal structure behind them that made their actions acceptable. There are some situations in our society where it's like, how would we ever think, why would we ever think something like that would be acceptable? Oh, well, boys will be boys. You know, that kind of shit, right? But it seems, and it, what it also seems like, what helped you reach this Ace of Cups energy, Queen of Cups. You started to understand what it was you were truly feeling. You started to take your emotions, your emotional reality seriously. And once you started to discover what it was you were truly feeling about the situation, that's when boundaries were put into place. Queen of, Queen of Cups, Seven of Wands, okay? The Queen of Cups can represent needing emotional boundaries or having emotional boundaries. Well, having the emotional boundaries is the situation here because the Queen of Cups is followed by the Seven of Wands and then the Queen of Swords to the Hanged Man because you gained the change in perspective. Where is he? Where is he? King of Swords. You gain the change in perspective, right? And the hanged man. And you're putting action into place. You're stopping the situation. No more. No more. Because I see it for what it truly is. And the hanged man also can represent that stagnant energy or that feeling of being stuck. And in some cases, or in some situations, or in some ways of, of, of defining it, yeah, you were stuck. You were stuck in a situation in which you were being manipulated potentially, or you were at least just being controlled or used or taken advantage of, whatever, however you want to describe it. But being stuck in that situation helped you gain a change of perspective that now is allowing you to change the situation. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Okay, next, maybe the last thing I want to clarify I think it is the last thing I want to clarify. King of Wands. Okay. So, King of Wands is clarified by what? Please, Spirit, what is this King of Wands energy? <laughs> We're back to the King of Cups, you guys. Okay, this is emotional maturity, emotional availability. It feels like, you guys, you were connected to someone that you, that initially the connection started maybe when you were younger. Um, and this might have been a situation that you've been in for a long time. Uh, but either you were younger or you were, you had less of a mature mind, mindset than you do now. And... That allowed you to get in with this person or get connected to this person. And I'm hearing, let's just see where it goes. 
Well, eventually it turned into a situation where this person or the other person or the energies of the situation were just controlling and domineering and really all about them own self, their own selves and not about the partnership or the union or the connection or whatnot, okay? So the King of Wands, and like I said, I feel like you are kind of adopting this King of Wands energy now. You're more focused on preserving yourself than you are on preserving this relationship or this bond any longer, right? King of Wands is clarified by the Six of Cups, the Knight of Wands, and the Star. Okay, there's one last card. It has fallen face down. We'll talk about that in a second. But what this is feeling like here is the perspective from the past or just the past circumstances, what has been happening in the past. And yes, you could look at this Six of Cups and say, oh, well, this is a soulmate relationship. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. You could say that. But it's not the type of soulmate situation that you, you know, spend the rest of your life with. This is a soulmate situation in which you learn something. You seriously learn something. But what I'm feeling like here is the Six of Cups to the Knight of Wands. This is you moving forward in terms of what it is you've experienced in this past situation. And now you're passionately moving forward towards the healing involved. But also the ultimate goal is what I just heard. And that ultimate goal is your wish fulfillment, the type of relationship you actually really want. And that's why I feel like some of you are so good right now. Whomever is resonating with this reading, it feels like you're so good. King of Cups, you're so good emotionally that you don't need to jump into another relationship with someone else. You would rather stay single than fuck around with someone else like this again. Excellent. You learned the lesson. That's that hanged man energy, okay? One last card that's fallen face down, it's judgment. See, what this is also saying, this King of Wands energy, this is, especially with judgment, what this is saying for you guys is, or whomever's resonating with this reading, it's saying it was finally time for you to step into this power for yourself. The other person or the other people around you were so well-versed in self-preservation, in getting what it is they know they wanted getting what it is they, what, however, whatever it is they believed they deserved and not even batting an eye. But then here you were, or the other person was, subservient in a way, always kowtowing, always, you know, catering to this other person or this, this situation, whatever this is for you, even if this isn't romantic for you, like whatever, even though that's the strongest thing I'm feeling here, but I digress. In, instead, now it was time for you to step up to the plate and take that energy on for yourself. Well, shit, if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna preserve my, if you're not gonna keep my my sense of self preservation intact, why, then why shouldn't I do it for myself? And quite frankly, why should I continue to do it for you? You seem to be good, set, solid. You don't need me, right? So instead, you turn that energy around and started using it for yourself. Because it was time. It was time for you to take your own sense of self-preservation under your, under, under your control. And, and, and I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is not a bad thing. This does not feel bad at all. This actually feels like the absolute right thing for you to do, even though it may not be easy. However, at this point, given what I'm feeling in this situation, it does feel like it's quite easy. And it almost, to a certain, de a certain degree, it kind of feels spiteful. Because it's like, oh yeah, motherfucker, watch, I'll show you. You want to be, you, you think you bad? Watch me. I'm the baddest bitch of them all. And ain't nothing gonna stop me. Just like you were trying to tell me, ain't nothing gonna stop you. Well, bitch, ain't nothing gonna stop me now. Now what? Now what? <laughs> I love it. I fucking love it, yo. This is great. Okay. Cool. Um, so let's close out this reading. You know, we're going to go with the love your inner goddess deck because there's such a, a strong sense of self-love going on here. Again, whether you are, even if you find yourself more on the masculine side, I do notice that there have been a few more men that have been tuning in lately. What's up, y'all? But like, don't take, like, you have an inner goddess too. And it just feels like this is coming from a place of deep, unconditional self-love. And so I don't necessarily, well, all right. I don't necessarily want to say that it's just a feminine energy that, that is 
connected to that because masculine energies are connected to that too. They just express it differently than the feminine. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, I, what, what I wanted to say was don't get caught up on the fact that it's your inner goddess. Like it's just a loving message. That's just, it feels like that's where the message needs to come from. So we gonna get, we gonna do that. Yes. All right. <laughs> so loopy today. All right. Five shuffles here. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Alrighty, kids. Closing Oracle Guidance for today's message. Ooh. We got... Okay, we got two of them. <laughs> okay, we have card number five, the Gelato Goddess. And on the card, it, she has this like brooch or a necklace that says Brave Girl. And that makes perfect sense because it fe definitely feels like if this is resonating for you, you are being brave. You're standing up for yourself. You're standing up for your own self-preservation. And that is brave, especially in the face of people that would want to put you down because of it. And then you also have card number 34, the Shaman of Skulls. That's interesting. And well, and on the card, it says right here, fearless. You're not afraid anymore. It's like, I'm hearing that moment, you know, in Home Alone, where he, <laughs> where Kevin, Kevin's standing out in the street, um, screaming or yelling at the guy, I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid anymore. That's what this feels like. Which is beautiful. We're going to start with card number five. Uh, okay, here we go. Have you given another the power to influence your sense of self-worth or your direction in life? Choose with care whom you allow to get close to you and to guide you. It's obvious and yet easy to forget that if we accept guidance or influence from another, we want to make sure that they are living the kind, the kind of life and being the kind of person that we aspire to be. You can learn from and be inspired by others, but you must stay true to yourself. Do not allow anyone else's voice to become more important to you than the divine voice within your own heart. Definitely some King of Wands energy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, number 34, the Shaman of Skulls. In a reading, this card says, in your heart, you've been asking for something different, something more, and the universe is answering your prayers. You do not need to be afraid of the changes happening or that they are going to happen for you. They are part of that answer from the universe. You might feel uncertain because you, can't, you cannot see how it is going to all work out, but know that the universe is caring for you and will provide a way to move through the transition with grace. You are not crazy to willingly enter this experience. There is nothing you need to avoid and so much that you will gain. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Excellent. Take care. Mwah! Bye. Ha, <laughs>